The Kings finish off the California Classic as they beat the Heat 95-83 to to go 2-0 so far in Summer League. And Keegan Murray just continues his absolute domination as he scores 41 points, adds in four blocks there in what will be, in all likelihood, his final Summer League game of his career. I've just been having so much fun watching Keegan Murray play in Summer League, so it's definitely going to be less fun uh, watching the Kings play without him in Vegas. But of course, he proved he doesn't need to be here. He proved that he has improved in a lot of ways. But, you know, a lot of people will say it's just Summer League. It's just Summer League. This doesn't mean anything. But, I mean, you can compare it to last Summer League where Keegan played. And he won MVP. You know, he was the best player on the court most of the time. But you can still, you can see the difference between last Summer League and these two games that he's played. He's a step above even what he was when he won MVP of the Summer League last year. And it's just the way he's going about everything. He was not taking guys off the dribble last Summer League. And it's so clear that the Kings' whole plan in these two games was to feed him the ball. And I saw a, you know, Salty Heat fans tweet, why is Keegan Murray playing in the Summer League? You know, I mean, a lot of people were asking that question. But, you know, this guy was saying, like, he's stunting other players' growth. And that's obviously a really stupid thing to say, because what about his growth? But that's kind of the thing that it made me think about was the Kings were so clearly prioritizing developing Keegan over anyone else. You know, he shot 20 shots in this game. He shot near 20 last game. And of course they want other guys to develop. Of course they want to see what other guys are made of, and they'll see that more in Vegas. But the reality of the situation is, outside of Keegan Murray, there are maybe one or two other guys that could be in an NBA rotation at some point, right? Like, very few guys who are playing in Summer League who aren't rookies or second-year players, and even the ones who are rookies or or second-year players, the guys who are playing Summer League, are probably not going to be your rotational guys unless it's, you know, a Brandon Miller or a Victor Weminyama, those types of rookies that are playing in Summer League. You know, you look at your guys like uh, Alex O'Connell off the bench and guys like that, like it's super unlikely that they're really going to do anything impactful in the NBA. And so the Kings are focusing, for these two games, we're focusing on developing the guy that they know is probably the most important guy, player on the whole Kings team, to the Kings taking the next step in terms of the Kings going from a first-round exit to championship contenders at some point. Keegan Murray's development is the most important thing in determining how good this Kings team can be. Of course, a guy like Colby Jones could make himself a rotational player. So could Kessler Edwards or even Keon Ellis, Nemeas Keda. But the reality is you can find those guys other places and you can't find a Keegan Murray very many places. I do always get stuck in, in rooting for guys. You know, I was sure like Justin James, that guy's going to be a rotational guy. Daquan Jeffries, shout out to Daquan Jeffries, who play, who's playing on the uh, the Knicks Summer League team. I was like, he's going to be a good NBA player. But uh, most of the time, it just doesn't work out like that for those type of guys. Keegan getting to the free throw line 15 times is crazy. And that's kind of the most exciting part of what he's done in Summer League, because Last season, every time he would drive inside and go for a layup, it was like 50-50 whether he was getting blocked or not. He was so slow, predictable in what he was going to do. And him getting to the free throw line like that and not getting blocked shows that he is going up with a lot more conviction, a lot more force, and just being less predictable and having more moves in his bag 
to be able to get by guys and not get blocked. He's not as slow going to the rim. And so that's huge. I think another thing that Keegan's improved on is his rebounding. I thought his rebounding was really good in this game. And and that's not always pulling down the rebound. There were a lot of times where he would just get in there and prevent another guy from getting a rebound and knock it away. And then another King can go and pick it up. And then he had those four blocks. I thought it was going to be five. I thought he got one late in the game that I guess they didn't count. But I mean, that's pretty huge for him. I thought he looked a lot better defensively in this game than the last game. He was not getting blown by in the same way. His help defense was really good. uh, And that's where he got a lot of his blocks. But even when a Guard would get by him. He would block him. Uh, and it's clear the Kings were also prioritizing his growth and the defensive uh, on the defensive side of the ball. They were having him guard guards pretty much the whole time. Having him getting used to being able to be being switched onto smaller guys, smaller, faster guys that can get by him pretty easily and would get by him pretty easily last season. He's never going to be the most laterally quick player, but if he can get better at predicting opponents' movements and and what's going to happen, and then also just using his length to be able to affect shots from behind the play if someone does get by him, that's a, a huge deal for him and his growth. He had the six turnovers, which is just kind of expected for a guy like him who's not a playmaker who has the ball in his hand so much and who's not really used to that. So that's just to be expected, especially in a summer league game where these teams are not the most well-oiled machines and and guys are not used to playing together and not as predictable with each other, right? You know, there are just not many teams really in NBA history that get to be a third seed that has a rookie that was the fourth overall pick on their team. And so the Kings have a an opportunity with Keegan to have what's already a solid team and make it that much better just from internal growth. Then we can move on to some of the other guys. Keon Ellis, I thought, had a lot better game tonight uh, as opposed to the one against the Warriors. I thought he looked better attacking the rim just overall looked more comfortable offensively. But then on the defensive end, which is, you know, his specialty, I thought he was fine against the Warriors. But in this game, he was even better. He was really, really good. Just his active hands, but also just the knack for getting his hand on the ball. He had two steals, two blocks, including that crazy snatch block with both hands. He just came flying out of nowhere. And then he just, he didn't throw the best oop on the other end to Kessler Edwards, but that could have been a crazy highlight end to end play for him. But I really liked what we saw out of him. And I think with him and everyone else on the team, he has more of an opportunity on the offensive end once uh, Vegas Summer League starts because Keegan's not going to be taking those 20 shots and 15 free throw attempts. I mean, that's a huge chunk of the offense. So he'll have a lot more opportunity to have the ball in his hands and show what he can do. And there'll just be more shots to to be taken. Same can be said for a guy like Namias Keita, who, again, he just, he's not showing quite enough. He's been pretty inconsistent. Uh, Like against the Warriors, had a really bad first half, better in the second half. In this game, it's a little bit of the same. He had nine rebounds, but they weren't, he wasn't the most convincing for a guy of his size on the board still. I can definitely see the way he impacts shots. Guys are definitely scared to go up uh, around the rim when he's there. And so that's a big positive for him. And I thought he was better at not jumping at pump fakes or reaching in. He was better this game than the last at using his height and just going straight up. And, and you know, there's one play where or I think it was Orlando Robinson was just banging into him. And he could kind of tell that 
Robinson was just going to the hoop no matter what. And so he just stayed straight up the entire time and stayed in front of him and forced the miss instead of looking to get the steal or get the block. He just played solid defense. And I think that's what he needs to do even more of rather than searching for block stats like a Hassan Whiteside did back in the day with the Heat and um, and other teams. Hida, I think, just needs to be better in Vegas if he really wants a roster spot. Because right now, he just has not been convincing enough. He's hit a few nice jump hooks, which is nice for when he gets a seal inside. But it's a little hard to judge his passing with a, when it's with a team that he's not familiar with. But I don't think his passing has been great in this summer league, which is something that He's kind of been known for being a solid passer at the center position. Uh, but yeah, I'm just hoping to see more from him in Vegas. Kessler Edwards kind of had pretty much the same game as he did against the Warriors. Well, he took a lot less threes. He was only 0 for 1 from 3. But in terms of what he produced offensively, it was the same. It was some transition, some drives to the rim, not much else. I think for him, his, his defense was great. And so for him, Summer League, you know, you, you can't just judge players purely on Summer League uh, as to what their NBA potential is. I think you see that with Kessler Edwards. I mean, he just he needs to be able to hit threes. But also guys who are role players in the NBA who are going to be role players and who don't have the ability to handle the ball can struggle in summer league and I think you're seeing that with Kessler Edwards a little bit and you're also seeing that with a guy like Jalen Slauson who just hasn't really done anything at all especially on the offensive end you know he's grabbed some boards got a block but for Slauson we just haven't seen really anything and and he's not a guy that's going to impact the game with the ball in his hands he also has been struggling with his shooting in these two games and so if you're not knocking down outside shots, for a guy like him, it's going to be tough to make an impact in a summer league environment, I think. But you still got to show something. Like, he has actually done nothing. Like, when I watch Kessler Edwards, I still see what he's doing defensively and think that is a pretty elite defender. I was watching Kai Jones earlier. was kind of thinking the same thing. Kai Jones is not a guy that's really going to handle the ball all too much, and, and make things happen offensively. But he was just flying around for the Hornets, make but under control, flying around but under control, getting steals, blocks, rebounds, you know, offensive rebounds, putbacks. Like, he was doing everything. And so that's kind of what you would hope to see out of a guy like Jalen Slauson. And I'm just really not seeing that from him. And I think he'll get more opportunity in Vegas with Keegan Murray out because they play the same position. I don't know if he'll start, but I definitely think uh, it'll be easier to judge him once he's getting more opportunity. I thought Jordan Ford had a pretty solid game. He had a really good shooting game against the Warriors, and in this game he couldn't really hit a shot, but I thought his playmaking was still solid. Had a couple steals. I don't know. I, I feel like it's probably pretty unlikely that he gets a, a two-way contract even to be the backup point guard. But I I think there is still a shot for him. I mean, I like what I see when watching him. He just seems like such a solid player, comfortable on the ball, knows how to get others involved and run an offense. I just don't know if he has a shot even, you know, coming in if that was even a thought. For the Kings, but I do think he could be a solid option because he was solid with Stockton last year, and it's pretty cool that a, a guy from Folsom is able to play even for the G League team and the Summer League team and start for the Summer League team now. I also think having a guy like him just for the Summer League team is important because you see what happens to a team that doesn't have a point guard. It's why we brought in Frankie Ferrari 
last summer league to run the team from the point and just pass the ball, which that was an experience. Um, but uh, <laughs> that was a funny time watching Frankie Ferrari. But uh, I think you see what happens when you don't have a guy like that with the Hornets, where you don't have a guy to get others involved and run the team, and the Hornets just look like a mess. And it's, I mean, the Hornets set their own second overall pick up. They set Brandon Miller up. He's had a terrible summer league so far because the team just looks so discombobulated with no point guard. And so it's nice to have a guy like that who can kind of keep the team running because if you don't have that, it's hard to see what other guys can truly give a team who aren't able to handle the ball like Akeda. Then we talk about Colby Jones. Second game, I, again, don't really think he's a point guard. Uh, you know, maybe he can develop into one. Don't really think he's a point guard, but I do think he's a really solid player. He went two for three from deep, four for six on the game with 11 points, three steals, four rebounds. Uh, but he had those three turnovers again. That's not the biggest deal in summer league, but I just no assists. He isn't running the team like a Jordan Ford is. But I love everything else about him. He seems like a, a sound defender, always hustling to get on the boards, which is like I talked about it after the last game. That's big and just seems like a super smart guy who might be able to carve out a role with the Kings in the regular season and I think is a really good depth guy to have and is one of the guys probably second or, or third on this summer league team in terms of guys that I think can make an impact in the regular season with Keegan obviously being number one and then Kessler Edwards being in there as well. And then a few other guys, Baum or however you say his name, didn't really do much. Jake Stevens, I liked what I saw from him. Two assists and a block. Only nine minutes, so didn't really get to see anything else. Didn't even have a rebound for such a big guy, but he looked solid. But again, like these are the types of guys that probably are never going to make an impact in the NBA or anything. But then a guy who I was talking about after last game that I was disappointed we didn't get to see, and that was Alex O'Connell. And he came out in this one, 11 minutes, had 14 points. He went four for five from three, five for six from the field and that guy just has such a quick release and is fun to watch i think on the broadcast i, I can't remember who said it whether it's kyle draper or matt barnes they one of them said you know there's always a place for shooters in the nba and i mean that's true you, you have to be able to defend somewhat but if he can keep shooting like he is i mean his shot looks like a michael porter jr shot it, it looks so sweet. And so I don't know if he'll ever even really get close to the NBA. But for a summer league guy, for a Stockton G League guy, he's a, a fun player to watch just because it's fun to watch him shoot. I'm glad that these two games didn't disappoint in terms of being super fun to watch because, like I said, and I've said the last two, Vegas is probably going to be a little harder to watch in terms of the quality of basketball because Keegan's not going to be playing and he's not going to be there to bail guys out. But I really liked how you could see how intentional Luke Laux was at getting Keegan the ball after every timeout. The play was drawn up for him even late in the fourth because he had those 39 points, got to get him to 40, you know, a play drawn up for him. And they're just trying to put him in uncomfortable situations. And he has thrived in those uncomfortable situations. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see how this translates to the regular season. Because obviously he's not going to have the ball in his hands as much as he is in summer league here. But it just means if he gets the ball late in the shot clock or even whenever... Just during the game, maybe Fox isn't on the court or Sabonis isn't on the court. Or maybe he just likes the matchup he has. Like, he can take advantage and create something 
or catch the defense off guard. It just adds another layer to his game and to the Kings offense in general. It must be so fun to do what he did and just know, like, I can shoot every shot. I can go at someone one-on-one pretty much every possession if I want to, and no one's going to care. And he just gets to dominate against lesser opponents. I'm just really looking for, in Vegas, Kata to have be just have more consistency throughout the game on both ends of the court. Keon Alice, see what he can do with the ball in his hands more, maybe. Colby Jones is going to have the ball in his hands more. Uh, see what we get from Slauson with more minutes. And just see who steps up with more shots available to them. I think that'll be fun to watch. Anyways, that is it for this episode of The Real Report. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention, so I'm finally doing it here. I did start doing short-form content uh, that, for the most part, is not just taking clips out of this video. So it is uh, new content, and I'm posting that on here on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all the links in the description, and in the channel info. So make sure to check that out. And then I will be back here talking about the next King Summer League game. Peace.